Some newly obtained data is providing a clearer picture of the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. It shows how radiation levels near the plant rose before a hydrogen explosion. Fourteen monitoring posts recorded radiation levels every 20 seconds after the earthquake and tsunami that damaged the plant three years ago. The levels started to rise the following day at a post more than five kilometers away. Measurements show radiation began surging at 2.10 in the afternoon. At 2.40, the readings briefly hit 4.6 millisieverts per hour, the highest mark that day. An hour later, there was a hydrogen explosion at reactor number one. Information may lead researchers to new discoveries. We would like to get as much data as possible. At the time, crews were trying to reduce pressure within the reactor's containment vessel, performing an operation called vent work. And Chino says that may have caused radiation levels to rise. Millions of people in Japan have spent the past three years worrying to different degrees about the health effects of radiation. Their concern is particularly strong in Fukushima Prefecture, the location of the damaged nuclear plant. Residents there are still debating whether it's safe to live in certain areas. A grassroots organization has launched an online radiation map to help them make informed decisions. NHK World's Ryo Asami shows us how it works. A do-it-yourself workshop is underway in downtown Tokyo. People from around the capital are here to learn how to build their own radiation measuring device. I've never used a soldering iron, not even once. I wasn't very confident at first, but it's actually quite interesting. I'm proud to be part of the project. Uh, it's something that is uh, it's important for everyone. The workshop is led by Peter Franken, a Dutch engineer who has been in Japan for more than 20 years. After the accident, Franken was struck by the lack of information about radiation, giving people access to their own monitoring device would allow them to make informed decisions. We created it so that people could measure radiation on their own. And the problem uh, was that we wanted to measure everywhere so we had to come up with a way to do that and the way we're doing that is, is we made the system so that it can be used while people are driving or bicycling or walking the Geiger counter is coupled with a GPS to keep track of its location the system is funded by donors around the world with technical support from engineers in and outside Japan Franken and his group frequently visit Fukushima Prefecture to collect radiation data. We have a measurement, two measurement systems are sitting outside. One is uh, connected to this monitor here, so we can see in the car, you can see what the radiation level is outside. The data from all monitoring devices is uploaded on a public website, which can be visualized on the map. A close-up view of the map reveals individual measurements. The monitoring devices are designed to take a spot reading every five seconds. That's one measurement every five to ten meters for someone on foot. Radiation levels are color-coded. Blue indicates a low reading, while red and orange highlight the more contaminated areas. The highest readings appear in yellow. They overlap with the evacuated areas around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The Japanese government spent much money installing the monitoring post in Fukushima prefecture. This post collects samples continuously over 24 hours. You can see the information in real time on the government's website. The prefecture is dotted with a network of more than 3,000 government monitoring posts. The static devices give a general idea of radiation levels, but they don't keep track of local variations between them. And for some residents, the system is not precise enough. Toshikazu Watanabe lives in Koryama, about 55 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. After the accident, 
He was so worried about radiation. He considered evacuating the area. Koryama is a large city. We all need to understand the situation in the specific area where we live. When he learned about the project, Watanabe asked Franken to help measure radiation levels near his house. The readings were lower than what he expected, and he decided to stay. On this day, Franken's team is installing a sensor outside the office of Watanabe's company. This will be visible to everybody on the internet, and if there is anything that changes, it will be visible too. It's very important that we ourselves find out the radiation level around us and how it's changing. Franken sees the device and the monitoring network as a way of empowering people. The worst decision is a decision that is based uh, not on data but on, uh, on a rumor or, or, or the wrong uh, assessment of the situation. So uh, by publishing the maps, by publishing the data, uh, it really is about creating uh, transparency and uh, openness about what's happening and then that's the best way to take action. Okay, let's look at this. Franken's network has spread beyond Fukushima, with more than 100 volunteers measuring radiation across Japan. He hopes more people will join the monitoring effort to improve it even further. Ryo Asami, NHK World, Fukushima. Their network's radiation map can be accessed on the website at safecast.org. Now, the chief of the International Atomic Energy Agency says the lessons learned in the aftermath of the Fukushima disaster will help improve nuclear safety worldwide. <coughs> IAEA Director General Yukia Amano spoke to reporters in Vienna. He said officials have made progress in cleaning up the plant and surrounding area. But he says the situation remains complex. Leakage of uh, contaminated uh, water uh, is a matter uh, that should be addressed urgently. Amano said his agency will continue to help Japan recover from the disaster. After the accident, the IAEA drew up an action plan to ensure the safety of nuclear power plants around the world. <laughs> Agency inspectors have conducted regular plant assessments in member countries. IAEA officials are analyzing the cause of the disaster and their response to it. They plan to release a comprehensive report by the end of the year. A nuclear energy panel has released its final report on the Fukushima accident. The investigation committee was set up by the Atomic Energy Society of Japan. In the report, the committee calls for enhanced measures to deal with natural disasters and serious accidents. The report says nuclear energy experts failed to have the results of their studies reflected in measures to guard against unexpectedly serious mishaps caused by natural disasters such as earthquakes and tsunami. It also acknowledges that the Atomic Energy Society had little understanding about the role experts should play in enhancing nuclear safety. It says the organization lacked awareness of natural disasters and failed to make sufficient efforts to maintain neutrality. The report urges the nuclear experts to realize that they would not be qualified to be involved in the atomic energy field if they could not properly deal with accidents or tackle disaster prevention. Japan's education ministry officials have revised teaching materials they made after the nuclear accident in Fukushima. They want students to learn more about the impact of the disaster, in addition to getting basic knowledge of radiation. The ministry originally published booklets in October 2011, about six months after the disaster. But many teachers complained that the material lacked sufficient information on the accident itself. The new booklets show how radioactive materials spread from the plant. They also show the current evacuation zones. They also explain how rumors about the disaster hurt the farming and tourism industries. Ministry officials say they hope the materials will help students better understand the situation in Fukushima and make an informed judgment. 
They will distribute the booklets to schools in April. They will also soon post them online. Engineers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are getting ready to keep an eye out for a potential new problem. They plan to dig observation wells on the Fukushima Daiichi site in case a radioactive spill gets into the groundwater. More than 100 tons of contaminated water overflowed from a storage tank last month and spilled onto the ground. Staff with Tokyo Electric Power Company said someone opened valves that should have been closed. They're using pumps to recover about half the spillage and removing tainted soil. Still, they're worried contamination could get into the groundwater and spread. Staff say they'll dig observation wells in three places, and they'll dig a well that can use they can use to pump up groundwater in case it gets tainted. Company officials say they're applying lessons they learned after an earlier leak. 300 tons of radioactive water spilled last August. Samples from wells showed it probably reached the groundwater. Officials at Japan's environment ministry say an expected earthquake and tsunami off the country's Pacific coast could produce up to 350 million tons of debris. That's about 11 times the amount from the March 2011 disaster. The estimate covers a quake and tsunami along the so-called Nankai Trough. The officials came up with the figure after studying disaster scenarios involving possible large quakes. They then estimated the volume of debris and simulated disposal based on the 2011 quake and tsunami in northeastern Japan. They say getting rid of the debris from such a disaster could take between 11 and 19 years. Officials at Japan's Environment Ministry are figuring out how they clean up after a possible mega quake. They say they'll lead the creation plans for disposing of mountains of debris. The officials simulated an earthquake and tsunami scientists say could strike the Pacific coast. They say that disaster could produce up to about 350 million tons of debris. That's 11 times the amount left by the earthquake and tsunami in March 2011. The officials say disposing of it could take 20 years. They plan to form panels where members of the public and private sectors will draw up plans region by region and they create a team of experts to discuss how to dispose of debris nationwide.